Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you my first impressions plus on feet video of the made in Japan version of the Mizuno Wave Ignitus 4. Now inside the box, they do include a string bag to go along with the shoes themselves. The string bag is black in color. It doesn't have strings like a backpack, but it does have strings at the top so you can seal it up. And then as you guys can see, it does say made in Japan as well as the Mizuno logo there in kind of like a bronze copper type color. Nothing on the back, it's left completely blank. Other than that, all you're gonna find inside the box, as you guys can see, are the shoes themselves. So, we'll get these guys out of the box really quickly, and we'll take a closer look at the Made in Japan Wave Ignitus 4 from Mizuno. Now Mizuno, certainly not the most popular brand, especially here in North America, but for those that might not be too familiar with Mizuno, uh, basically how it works with them is they have two versions of most of their shoes. A regular version, which is generally made in Indonesia, and those go all the way to the top end model, generally around the $200 retail price. And then they have a made in Japan version, which is kind of considered their ultra premium, better build quality, generally different, different materials. Um, and those retail for closer to $300. These guys retail for $280. The regular Indonesian made version of the Wave Ignitus 4 retails for $200. So it's an $80 premium for the made in Japan version. And the main difference you're gonna find with this shoe is that this does have kangaroo leather on the upper as opposed to being full synthetic, among some other differences that I'm gonna be pointing out in this video. So if you wanna learn more about the tech specs, the overall fit and feel, the weight of the shoe, and just generally what's the difference between the regular and made in Japan version of the Wave Ignitus 4, please stick around and watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $280 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. And with that being said, let's get right into the review. To start things off, let's go over all the tech specs so we can learn a little bit more about the performance and of course the quality of the Made in Japan version. Now, if you're just talking about the Wave Ignitus 4 in general, any of the top end variations, it's kind of a dying breed of soccer shoe. It's the last of its kind, which is kind of a cool thing. If you were a fan of the Nike T90 line, if you were a fan of the Adidas Predator line, this is kind of the closest thing that you can get to those shoes from a brand like Mizuno that makes top-notch quality products, especially if you're talking about the Made in Japan version. So, Made in Japan version, $280 retail price. Then of course you have the regular Indonesian made version, which is what I have right here, which retails for $200. So again, there's an $80 premium on the Made in Japan version. Is it worth that extra $80? Yes and no, it's really going to come down to what you're looking for from your pair of Wave Ignitus 4s. Now, as far as little differences that you can tell visually, obviously this one does have a kangaroo leather upper, whereas the regular version is full synthetic. And I will say the kangaroo leather on this shoe is a lot softer and the shoe in general just feels softer on feet, something I will talk about a little bit later in the video. So if anything, I do think that the Wave Ignitus um, for made in Japan version is the more comfortable of the two. But aside from the kangaroo leather, most of the shoe is the same. There's some subtle differences in terms of how the shoe is put together. You can see how the stitching is done here where the actual kangaroo leather and the rubber vamp uh, kind of come together, the rubber striking element where you have the double stitching on the one side here and it kind of sits flush where as, as on the Indonesian made model, it's not quite as seamless. There's kind of an overlap in, in the material and you just feel that seam. Um, obviously this one has a fused on or built in Mizuno logo. This one has one that's stitched on. You can see that it has the double stitching right here where the material transitions. Here it only has a single kind of uh, inverted seam. So again, there's little differences throughout the entire shoe that I could point out in regards to just build quality differences. But really what it comes down to is that I will say the Mizuno, uh, the Made in Japan version does feel softer. It does feel more comfortable. It has a slightly different shape because of the difference in materials. But ultimately the difference is not as significant as I think a lot of people would like to suggest. Um, the, the Made in Japan version unquestionably is the better quality one. Uh, but again, like I said, the difference is not huge. Um, as far as kangaroo leather is concerned, that's always nice to see on a soccer shoe. We don't see that enough anymore. But the amount of kangaroo leather you get on this shoe is honestly pretty questionable. It is from this seam here. So 
basically uh, one third of the forefoot here on the lateral side. That's the seam. It goes all the way through here and then cuts off basically on a diagonal. You can see the seam right here and then the rest of the seam is covered up by the Mizuno logo. Everything back from here is synthetic and everything from the striking element back is also synthetic. So the amount of leather you get is basically from here to here. Not a significant amount, but it does make a difference in terms of how the shoe fits, feels, and when you're running around, you definitely notice that there is more softness in this general area of the foot, um, which is a good thing. I definitely prefer this kangaroo leather in this particular spot as opposed to the synthetic. It just makes the shoe feel a lot more natural, and the quality of the kangaroo leather, as you would expect from Mizuno on any Made in Japan model, is top notch. It's as nice as you're going to find on any leather shoe. But again, this midfoot part is still a synthetic leather. Would have loved to see it be full kangaroo leather. That would have really changed the feel of the shoe. But for whatever reason, they maintained a synthetic upper through the midfoot on both sides. As far as other differences you're going to find with the Made in Japan model, obviously it still has the same offset lacing system. The tongue itself is kind of the same construction in that it's synthetic with memory foam inserts running throughout, but it's a slightly different synthetic with a slightly different liner that again, just feels a little bit higher quality, a little bit softer overall. So that is a minor improvement if you want to call it that. But aside from that, there's a slight difference in the insole and that's pretty much it. Everything else about this shoe is pretty much going to perform exactly the same way. You do have their bio panel strike zone right here, um, which is a, a solid rubber element backed by a perforated synthetic material. It has this kind of interesting design that has some nice texture to it, but the rubber itself is more of a kind of smooth, uh, almost firmer rubber. It doesn't have that same kind of soft grippy feel like you got from the Predator Instinct, for example. So yes, it will provide more grip on the ball than a standard soccer cleat would, but it doesn't feel overly grippy. Again, like kind of what you got from the Predator Instinct. Is that a good or bad thing? Not really either. It really depends on what you like. I really like the grippiness of the Pred Instinct, but I really like how this shoe feels as well. You get that little bit of extra bite on the ball when striking through it, and just the pinginess that it provides from the firmer kind of thin layer of rubber also just feels really good and something you can't really get from anything else out there at the moment. Um, on the uh, medial side right here, kind of through the midfoot, you have their dead ball zone, which is supposed to kill spin. Basically what it is, it's a synthetic material with three memory foam inserts right here. So the idea is that when you strike the ball here, it's going to provide that kind of enhanced uh, ability to hit that dead ball where the ball is, has no spin, a knuckleball um, in other words. Is this a shoe that's gonna help you kick a knuckleball better? Not necessarily. I would argue that it really comes down to skill and more so the ball as opposed to the shoes on your feet. But if that's something that you really like to do, the Mizuno Wave Ignitus 4 is partially des designed around kicking a knuckleball free kick. It always has been. So uh, definitely one of those shoes that you may want to consider if that's something that you really, really like doing. But for me personally, it's just a little bit of extra kind of dampened effect right here in this area. Feels really good when making passes on the ball. I will say that. But again, is it actually enhancing performance? Not necessarily. This is again, something we've kind of seen from Adidas before with the Predator LZ1. And again, it wasn't really a major feature on that shoe either. Moving on to the rear, you're gonna find a pretty standard cut in the heel. If anything, it does have a bit of a deeper fit, which I kind of like, and then the back does come up a little bit higher, um, which again, just has a nice secure sensation. The shoe is lighter than you might expect as well, which we'll take a look at in just a second. The inside heel liner is kind of a synthetic suede material. It's very, very smooth though. A little bit different than the regular version, but honestly not something too significant that you're actually going to notice when you're wearing the shoe. Uh, the insole is a little bit different in that it does have a more kind of rough, almost carpet-like liner that's supposed to grip your sock a little bit better, which it will. This is something we've seen many times before from Mizuno. Obviously, it does say Made in Japan on the insole as well with the gold Mizuno logo. And it's a slightly different foam as well. The foam on the regular insole is gray. This one is black. It feels a little bit more dense to me. And you also do have the little extra foam insert in the heel as well. So pretty decent insole. It gets the job done, doesn't slide around on you, which is really important. You do, of course, have the external heel counter, solid plastic. I uh, really like how it looks, really like how it feels, and you also get that little bit of extra protection at the back of the shoe because of how kind of significant it is as a part of the design. And then, of course, you have the sole plate and the stud pattern, which is a plastic material, very flexible. You've got the two rivets at the front, uh, just making for a really solid bond between the sole plate and the upper. Durability is always a very, very strong characteristic that you're going to find across the entire Mizuno brand, no matter what silo it is. Um, and as far as the stud pattern is concerned, it's really interesting. Um, it's a firm ground stud pattern, so obviously made for use on firm natural grass. 
um, only, by the way. And it's very, very stable. It's got these bladed studs that are positioned kind of across the entire foot. Definitely a lot more studs and a lot more surface area is covered in the forefoot than you would normally see in the average firm ground stud pattern. Um, and what's great about this is stud pressure really isn't an issue just because there is so much uh, kind of surface area covered that pressure is very evenly distributed across the bottom of the sole plate. And the amount of bite that you get in general is actually pretty good. You push off in all directions. The shoe feels very, very stable when your foot is planted, which is a nice characteristic. Is it the most aggressive stud pattern money can buy? Absolutely not. But the performance that it does offer I didn't have any issues with. Traction always seemed to be very good. Then you have a more kind of standard four stud layout in the heel. Um, we have kind of a similar idea to what's going on on the current Evo Power 1.3. We have a slightly smaller stud at the tip of the heel, which is going to be obviously your main stud that plants first when you're striking the ball. So kind of an interesting technology. They did kind of design it around foot mapping and how your foot actually moves when you're running and when you're striking the ball. And like I said, the overall performance is very, very good. No complaints from me in terms of using them on firm natural grass. So that's pretty much it as far as tech specs and just general differences between the made in Japan version and the regular version of the Wave Ignitus 4. Is it worth the extra $80 to go for the MIJ version? That's kind of something you have to determine for yourself, but I guess if I had to decide between the two in terms of which I like better, I will say the made in Japan version does feel more comfortable and just softer in general, in my opinion. As far as weight is concerned, I thought we'd compare the Indonesian made version of the Wave Ignitus 4 to the made in Japan version to see if there's any significant weight difference between the two. Now keep in mind, these are both in brand new condition. The Indonesian made version I have is a 9.5 US and the made in Japan version that I have here is a half size smaller, a size nine US. But otherwise, it's a pretty fair comparison. This one's just a half size bigger. So we'll start off with the Indonesian made model, throw it on the scale, and you can see that they weigh in at a relatively lightweight 8.3 ounces, the equivalent of 236 grams. So remember those numbers, change the scale back to ounces, pull these off, and we'll throw on the made in Japan version, and you can see that they weigh in at eight ounces, the equivalent of 228 grams. So unsurprisingly, the made in Japan model is ever so slightly lighter. Keep in mind as well, it is technically half a size smaller, so it will save a little bit of weight there. But for the most part, there's no significant weight difference between these two shoes. They're both very light for this style of shoe. If you're comparing these to previous T90 models or even previous Predator models, these are much lighter than pretty much what we got from Nike and Adidas from those particular shoes. Um, so again, if you want that type of feel, but don't necessarily want a heavy bulky shoe on your feet, you definitely won't get that sensation from the Wave Ignitus 4. They feel nice and light, they feel really nimble, um, and it's a shoe that fits extremely well too. So again, if you're looking for a shoe that has that kind of more significant rubberized striking element sensation but isn't going to weigh you down, you absolutely cannot go wrong with either version of the Wave Ignitus 4. Aesthetically, I really like how the Wave Ignitus 4 looks in general. The Made in Japan model obviously does have the kangaroo leather that will look a little bit more tattered over time than what you're going to find from the synthetic upper on the regular version. You also do have the stitched on Mizuno logo here which perhaps doesn't look as sleek. But aesthetically, honestly, there's not a huge difference between the regular and made in Japan version. So for me personally, I really wouldn't consider that to be a deciding factor whatsoever. It's really more a matter of what type of feel that you want, how much you have to spend, and really whether or not you want something that's gonna be a little bit softer, because that's kind of what you're getting here with the Made in Japan version. Um, I really just like the look of this shoe. It's a very aggressive design. This is pretty much the only colorway that's available at the moment, which I have no issues with. I really, really like it. The combination of kind of like an off-white color with the black just looks absolutely fantastic. White and black, always a good color combo. And I like it that it has that kind of split design where it's kind of looking forward down the middle of the shoe. The lateral side is white, the medial side is black, and then of course the branding um, obviously accents whatever color is in the background. Then you have the black and white sole plate as well. Um, what I will say about the Mizuno Wave Ignitus is that whichever model it is, one, two, three, or four, every time I wear a pair of those, people always really seem to notice them. It's one of the shoes that gets most attention out of pretty much anything that I've worn in public, which is pretty much anything. A lot of my teammates, obviously they know what I do. They're familiar that I'm in new shoes all the time, but I have to say that every time I wear a pair of Wave Ignituses, 
it's like I said, one of those shoes that people really seem to receive well. They always ask what it is. They always think it looks really cool. So for me, I'm a big fan of these. I always have been. I, I really think Mizuno's products look absolutely fantastic. But let me know your opinions on them down below in the comment section. Do you like how these look? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to the on feet portion of the video so we can get a better idea as to how these shoes fit and of course what the sizing is like. All right, so here is a look at the Made in Japan Wave Ignitus 4s on feet. On my left foot, I have the stock white laces that come with the shoes. And on my right foot, I have a pair of black wide reflective SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. You find a direct link to that website down below in the description of this video. Now, in terms of how these things fit and feel on feet, like I mentioned earlier in the video, the general material itself, both the kangaroo leather as well as the rest of the upper that appears to be the same synthetic does actually feel a little bit softer on the made in Japan version. So this shoe doesn't have quite the same stiffness out of the box and in general just feels more comfortable in my opinion. It also does have a slightly different shape which is why I ended up going for a different size in the made in Japan version versus the Indonesian made version. With the regular model given that it does have the synthetic upper what I found with the Mizuno Wave Ignitus 3 as well, is that this seam right here just caused a little bit of discomfort when I stuck with my normal size 9 US. So for that reason, I went up to a 9.5. It does have a fairly low volume in the, heel, in the toe box area, and the fit was just more comfortable for me. With the Made in Japan version, given that you do have the kangaroo leather and just a higher volume, slightly different shape to the toe box, I found that I could go back to my regular size 9 US and the fit is actually more comfortable than the size 9.5 in the regular model. So as far as comfort is concerned and just the way the shoe fits and feels on feet, uh, being a lot more not natural and more flexible out of the box, I definitely will say that the Made in Japan version is better in that regard. As far as width is concerned, it's a shoe that will fit most people. It still has a tighter fit overall. But even if you do have slightly wider feet, you shouldn't have too many issues with the Wave Ignitus 4. It definitely will fit most people. Just keep in mind that you're not going to get much stretch out of this shoe. You'll get a little bit of stretch right here on the lateral side of the forefoot where it is actually kangaroo leather. But the rest of the shoe that is rubber and synthetic is not going to give at all. It will maintain its shape pretty well. And then of course, as far as sizing is concerned, like I said, with the Indonesian made model, I personally recommend going a half size up. Whereas with the Made in Japan model that I have right here, I went with my usual size 9 US and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair, I would recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. All right guys, that is it for my review of the Made in Japan Mizuno Wave Ignitus 4. Expect to see more follow-up content on this shoe on my channel in the very near future. If you guys are interested in more info, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find the high quality images of this exact pair that I took myself. That'll give you a better idea as to how they actually do look in person, as well as buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick them up below their normal $280 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. If you have any questions at all regarding this particular shoe, leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.